Well, thanks for joining us as uh, we have the opportunity today to talk about a, a news story that just uh, is, is kind of coming to light this afternoon with Adams Land and Cattle in Broken Bow. And as you can see, uh, president of Adams Land and Cattle, uh, Abram Babcock, joins me today. Abram, thanks for taking the time to explain what's going on. You bet. I'm, I'm glad to be here and, and thanks for having me. Well, the headline is there is a large, we're talking $200 million project going into effect for Adams Land and Cattle, primarily at the south lot, that involves a new surface for the cattle on the feedlot, and then eventually an aerobic digester that uh, creates some other opportunities. Uh, in a nutshell, can you tell us uh, why Adams Land and Cattle is making this move? Yeah, you bet. Um, yeah, so, you know, the on the roller compacted concrete, which we'll refer to as RCC, you know, we've been we've been looking at this product for several years now. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a way to kind of cost effectively and quickly uh, put down concrete. Um, so we've looked at uh, multiple different things. You know, how do the cattle perform on the concrete? What it does for dust and odor? Uh, and as we've studied those things, and you and others have studied those, uh, really everything is beneficial to to RCC. So we think from a long term perspective. Um, you know, from a company, a community, our commitment to sustainability, um, that RCC is, is the right move forward for Adams Land and Cattle at the South Lot. Is this something that's widely in use at feedlots? Yeah, so it's, it's fairly new in the, in the U.S. Um, you know, uh, Canadian feedlots started uh, uh, utilizing RCC probably 10 or 12 years ago. Um, there was a big project in the Pacific Northwest. But over the last couple of years, um, not rebuilding an entire feedlot yet in Nebraska, but becoming fairly common uh, in, in Nebraska as, as people, you know, start to replace uh, aging infrastructure of feedlots and want to reinvest in their business. RCC is a, a pretty appealing, um, you know, surface for a, for a pin to, to look at. You talked a little bit about the advantages of having an RCC uh, uh, surface. Uh, how, how do the cattle get along on it? Yeah, so the cattle do, do, do really well. So, we, we, you know, we did uh, a lot of randomized trials. Um, you know, where a, a couple things, a few years ago, we took some of our logistic pins out of logistic use, uh, more in, t in, in look and did trial work on those for a year, um, an experimental perspective. And again, looked at all the, the cattle outcomes and the, the dust, the odor, those things, all of those outcomes, uh, benefited RCC over dirt pins. And then about a year ago, we invested kind of on a small scale. We, we put about a million and a half square feet of concrete, about 11,000 head. So the last year we've been doing the same thing. Um, we've been been using that kind of smaller scale project to really learn how to manage um, RCC and and truly understand the the cattle outcomes uh, on a on a little larger scale than you know just a, a trial basis. Now, how will the RCC translate to the second half of this project, which is the anaerobic digester? Yeah, so you know anaerobic digestion you know has has been something in 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 ag industry that have been fairly common, especially in the dairy industry. Uh, one of the challenges in the in the feedlot side is, you know, when we're removing manure from a pin, uh, typically it's 50 to 60 percent dirt. And an anaerobic digester, think of it as, a, as another rumen. You know, it continues to process the volatile solids um, from the manure. So when it's that high of dirt content, the the, the digester just can't uh, can't produce the gas that it needs to. Um, so with with RCC, really, what that allows us to do is is have a pin surface where um, the manure is never being um, exposed to dirt. Um, so we can harvest that manure in a really efficient manner, um, further process that manure in the anaerobic digester, uh, and create renewable natural gas um, from that process. Now, what will happen with that natural gas? Yeah, so um, we, will, we will partner with a development company that will come in and build and operate the digester. Um, that natural gas, like it does in the dairy industry, um, that renewable natural gas can go directly into the pipeline. Uh, uh, into the natural gas pipeline. Are there other products that are a result of that anaerobic process? Yeah, so you bet. So, you know, all of the nutrients that from manure that go into a digester, you know, like your nitrogen, your phosphorus, um, that we and others spread um, from a manure perspective, those are all still left um, when, when, you know, when the process um, is, is done uh, with the manure. Uh, there, and what it allows us to do is we can further process those nutrients through some uh, some different uh, manure uh, separation or some solid separation um, techniques to actually repartition the nutrients, the phosphorus, the nitrogen, uh, where they become really consistent, valuable products to not only our farming operation, but others as well. 
Abram Babcock from Adams Land and Cattle joins us. We're talking about the new project involving RCC surfaces at the South Lot at Broken Bow and eventually the anaerobic digester. Uh, you talked about the, the reduction of dust and dirt and how that's an advantage to the cattle. It's an advantage to your staff that works on the lot. It's, it's to the advantage of the community uh, to reduce that. Are there other things that you'd like to point out about this project? You know, I, you know, I, I think it's an, we're, no, we're really excited about it. Um, you know, it's, it's a large scale project to, to bring to Broken Bow in, in Custer County. Um, it'll create some new jobs from, from the anaerobic digester um, and, and some new opportunities uh, there. And, you know, I, I think, you, you know, you said, it, I, I think it's good for our business. It, it, we think it's the way of the future. Um, and I think it's a, a really good thing for the community as well. If you're joining us on Facebook Live this afternoon, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, we're we're going to dig in a little bit deeper now uh, on the project that was announced today, and I'm sure you've seen it in a variety of outlets uh, with the RCC surfaces going into Adams Land and Cattle. Um, can we dig a little deeper into the RCC? And Is this something, a project that you're going to begin on right away, or what does the timeline look like? Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're both, both us and the, the uh, both ALCC and the, the development company for the digester, uh, we're finalizing our, our financing um, currently. Um, so I'd say both party, we're about two thirds way through that. Um, so if all that, you know, um, transpires the way I think it will over the next several weeks here, uh, this project would kick off, you know, late next spring, early summer. Um, is when we would start uh, both projects uh, and then to, to, to transition the entire south lot, you know, from dirt pins to, to roller compacted concrete or RCC pins, that take about two years. Now, as I understand it, you do have some RCC pins currently at Adams Land and Cattle. And what have you seen on those pins compared to your traditional lots as yeah. of right now? So about a year ago, we, we, we went down the path of, of um, pouring about one and a half million square feet of, of concrete about 11,000 heads. So we've, we've taken the opportunity to, over the last year, to really learn how uh, the differences and how you need to manage that surface versus a dirt pin. Uh, but we was all, also continue to look at the cattle performance. Um, and our outcomes there mirror, you know, all of the data that we generated a few years ago, all of the external data, um, and really every outcome that you look at, you know, relative to cattle, um, dust, odor, all of those things favor favorite concrete versus traditional dirt pins. Abram, you provided us with a little bit of footage and yeah. this was taken a few weeks ago, I yes. believe, but it, it gives an example of uh, the dust reduction. If you would uh, maybe kind of walk us through this as I flash it up on the screen. You bet. So, you know, as, as this video comes up and, and we're panning, you know, right to left here, these would be concrete pins. Um, so as you can see, really a lot of people don't realize that, that what creates dust is the dirt. So manure itself does not have any dust. And it, as you, as it starts to pan across there, you can see a little further out past the concrete pins. It was one of those days of right about dusk where, you know, the cattle start becoming active and you get kind of this dust cloud above the feed yard, um, which you can see obviously on the west side of the yard there, quite a bit of dust just sitting above those pins. But over the concrete, there, there is absolutely no dust. Um, and this, you know, we had a, a, an opportunity to really, to, to, um, to look at this this fall because you know i think we went what maybe 70 days without any precipitation um, so we implement a lot of different strategies out there from a dust mitigation standpoint but we we still had you know uh, challenges with dust uh, and this is one of the things i've been really excited through that stretch is going out there um, and, and visually seeing what it does from a dust perspective and um, it makes a lot of si uh, uh, sense when you talk to you know the the scientists behind uh, kind of, uh, you know, Sechi agri-services um, out, of, out of Raymond, Nebraska. They've, they've done a lot of research here, um, and they all tell you that, again, that what creates dust on a feedlot is the dirt, not the manure. And you can see uh, in this still picture as well the difference. Uh, the, the near pins are the RCC pins, that's right. and the far ones are the uh, traditional yes, pins that right. you've been using for a long time. So this seems like this is going to be a, a large-scale project. You're going to design the pins on the South Lot almost completely? Yeah, so we will start over from scratch. I mean, we, you know, you know the, the South Lot has some aging infrastructure. So, you know, um, you know over the next several years, we're going to make investments there anyway. Uh, but we will, as we, as we go through the phases of construction, we will basically rebuild the entire lot. Um, we will put new underground infrastructure in, new bunks, new fences. Um, everything will be new 
on the yard. Now, as I understand it, this is going to allow you to increase capacity yeah. or the number of cattle that you have on the feedlot without increasing the footprint. That's that's exactly right. So, you know, um, with a dirt pen, typically in, in Nebraska, you're any you're about 250 square feet per animal. Um, uh, you know, and that allows you to, to keep a really good pin surface and kind of manage that pin. Um, because as you get more concentrated on a dirt pin, it's, it's harder to maintain the pin surface, uh, with, with roller compacted concrete, um, you can actually go down to about 125 square feet per head. So it allows you to, to feed more cattle on the, on the same footprint, much like it would, you know, a confined, um, like a barn in, in Northwest Iowa, Northeast Nebraska that they'd have up there. You can, you can just feed more cattle in, in the same, in the same area. If you are joining us on Facebook or on YouTube right now, if you have any questions for Abram, feel free to put them in the comments and we'll try to address those too. Uh, but you mentioned to me also it'll take less bunk space. I think that has to do with the redesign of the yeah, pens. So the other, you know, t today, you know, as, as the South Lot was built first, our, more of our pins are um, more rectangle in shape. Um, what we're really doing is, is, is really focus on the efficiency of the yard as we move forward. Um, so we'll have, you know, square pins with three different sizes that are kind of divisible by one another. Um, that way uh, we, can, we can utilize the space that we have. The other thing that it, it really maximizes the bunk space for, for, the, for the cattle um, as well. Um, so we'll actually, in this new design, have more bunk space um, in, in the future state than we do currently on the yard. So the uh, manure is going to be collected off these RCC pins um, and then transported to the anaerobic digestion process. Where is that going to be located? Yeah, so the, the anaerobic digester, we will actually will be on um, one of our pivots just south of the, just right across the road um, uh, um, from the south lot. So just, just directly south of the, of, the, of the feed yard. It'll sit on about 40 acres of one of our pivots there. Okay, and um, as far as the opportunities that that facility presents yeah. to the area, uh, will that result in some jobs? Yeah, so that, you know, what kind of the way it's, it's, it looks today is, is that'll probably be eight to nine full-time jobs. Um, you'll have uh, three, um, you know, more staff engineers at that facility and six operators um, that, you know, it'll be a, a, a continuous flow operation that, you know, is, is working 365 days a year, just like our feedlot operation is. Now, with the digester, is there, I mean, I'm trying to think of questions that the public might have yeah. about it. Uh, is there any uh, odor or sound or any sort of concern <clears throat> with that process? No, really, no, no, real, no odor and sound. Um, you know, the digester technology has changed a lot over the last 10 years. And actually, even to clean and maintain these, these systems now, um, it's, it, it, everything can be removed and worked on um, through kind of vacuum chambers. Um, so there's, there's really never any need to open up the digester if they were to have to open up the digester, um, you know, for, you know, longer term cleanings, uh, they're emptied out before there's, you know, any cleaning done. So there's, there's really never, um, the material going through the digester, the volatile solids from the manure are really never, there's never any exposure to, to the outside. It's all can, contained. Can we talk a little bit more about the products that will be produced yeah. by the digester? Yeah. So like I said, you know, the, the. All of the nutrients that go into a digester come out, and so really, what you're you're left with is the renewable natural gas, um, which is which is through that process, and then you know you're 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 left with the main ones would be nitrogen and phosphorus, um, and then the fiber that the the bugs and the digester you know don't turn into natural gas. Yeah, so this is a, a figure that kind of does I think a good job uh, depicting kind of the nutrient flow cycle. So you have a feedlot, you have a you know feed, the manure going from the feedlot to the anaerobic digester. You have renewable natural gas. So then um, you have water that comes out of the anaerobic digester. What we'll do, um, and this is very common in the dairy industry, is it go through a screw press on the top of the solid separation there, um, and you basically that's the first phase where you separate solid the the water and the fiber that's left. Um, this fiber, which is, is labeled dry digestate, um, is, is a, I'd say it's, it's really an odorless, I don't want to say odorless, it's an earthy smell. It doesn't have a smell of, you know, uh, manure. Um, it's, it's a real fibrous product that has some nutritional value. But what we've spent this summer studying is, is, is can that product be used to bed cattle um, in, in the concrete pens, which is very common in the dairy industries um, to, to leverage and, and our data would show, yeah, that's a really good product to, to bed the cattle with. So we'll recycle that products probably through the pin and then it'll go back to the digester. Um, and then the, the liquid will go through a couple more, um, processes and essentially you'll be left with, 
Um, it'll go through a, a vibratory um, process in the middle there and then ultra filtration process in the bottom. Um, and then essentially you're, you're left with two liquid fertilizer products. Um, and one is a, a product that really has removed all the phosphorus and it's, it's main nutritional uh, value is nitrogen. And the other product is a product that has both nitrogen and phosphorus, but balanced a lot better than even manure is. Um, and those will be really, really consistent products coming out the back. And your plan for those products are? Yeah. So the, 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 the plan yeah. for our products is, is, you know, with the, with the one product, we can basically re- replace all of our synthetic nitrogen needs on our crop ground. Um, and the other will, will work with our local, um, uh, manure customers, corn, corn customers, much like we do manure today, um, to put processes in place for, to, to allow them to leverage it on their crop ground. Uh, Abram, how will this project, um, affect, like the uh, truck traffic and uh, highway traffic in and around the South. You bet. So, you know, if if you look at just the, the traffic that, 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 uh, is, is, um, directly related to how we manage manure, right? We, we harvest manure and then, then we, we spread that manure on our ground on, on, on customers, uh, ground as well. So it's a, and when we, like I said, when we haul that manure out, it's 60% dirt. So, Ultimately, overnight with concrete pins, you have 60% less material that'll be that'll be coming out of the pins. Um, so even with increased of head, we'll still be eliminating um, uh, a good portion of the truck traffic that's related to to managing the byproducts or the manure side of it. Um, and from the south lot, you know, we'll no longer have any you know manure trucks going over or over county roads or any or any manure stockpiles. Um, from from the south lot what kind of permits or approval process needs to happen for both of these yeah projects? so so ours you know we, we went through and, and we worked really closely with with the, the board of supervisors planning and zoning um, from a county perspective um, and then we had to um, uh, apply for a, a increase uh, or, or a change to our state permit um, which uh, uh, we've we've done um, so that that's really you know one um, will never increase headcount without RCC. That that's a requirement, right? The the only way you can increase headcount is 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 with the investment in in the roller compacted concrete. So we've submitted that state permit. Um, it's going through a public comment period um, now. And on the digester side, um, there's several different permits that that from a state perspective um, that'll need to be submitted. Um, and that company's currently kind of starting that process with 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 their permitting. Very good. Uh, what what haven't we talked about yet uh, as far as this project is concerned? We just want to get word out about what is happening as this project uh, goes through the proper channels yeah. that need to happen. Um, again, your timeline is, it sounds like maybe next summer is w- when people start to see things happening. Yeah, you know, I think next summer is a good goal. You know, and again, just assuming that, that the financing pieces for both yeah. parties come, come together. Um, but independent of that, you know, if, if digester happens or not, we still believe as a company, RCC is the future. Um, so we're, we're still, we'll still move forward with the state permitting piece. Um, if, if digester moves forward, the, the project will happen fairly quickly. Um, if it doesn't, um, then, you know, getting to kind of that future state of RCC at the South lot will probably take a little longer to, to do. Um, but we're really excited about the opportunities um, that, that RCC presents for, for our business, our industry, um, and ultimately the, the community here. Um, I, I think there's just, uh, and we've talked about it really, when, when you really study it and you, and you look at er, all of the benefits, um, there aren't really any negatives to it. When you're looking at uh, cattle feeding on a grand scale across yeah. uh, the country, uh, one of the drawbacks in Nebraska is our weather. Yeah. Um, and this could maybe mitigate some of those, uh, issues. Do you think? Yeah, you bet. You know, I, I, you know, when you feed cattle in Nebraska, right, our, our biggest risks are, are weather and markets. Um, our big competitive advantage in Nebraska, I, I think, um, number one is our feed cost, right? We're a net exporter of corn. Um, so, so corn is, is cheaper here than say, you know, Kansas or Texas. The, the benefits that they have though, is they don't typically get as much wet weather. Um, and, and mud in a feedlot is, is something you don't want because it, it impacts the cattle. Uh, so with RCC and, and basically the ability to, to eliminate um, that risk in, in mud in a feed yard uh, puts us at a really good, um, you know, playing field, you know, from a long-term uh, cattle feeding industry for, for the state of Nebraska. And I, I think we will continue to see um, more 
like I said, more people invest in in RCC as we move forward um, in in the feedlot Nebraska, in the Northern Plains. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today about the project at Adams Land and Cattle. Um, and um, we, we, we wish you the best of luck well, as it moves forward. Yeah. Being here. So yep. it's, it's good to, it's good to, you know, talk about it and, and get it out there. And like, you know, if, if people have questions, Phil, uh, please have them, uh, you know, feel free to reach out. I, I want to make sure, you know, we answer people's questions and, um, and concerns and, and uh, I'm willing to sit down with, with whoever, whoever has those. So, Well, thanks for joining us today. That is Abram Babcock, the president at Adams Landing Cattle in Broken Bow. And I'm Adam Smith on the Rural Radio Network.